it's completely normal to ruminate about something that happened in the past and to perhaps be anxious about something that hasn't happened yet. But it's like being in a rocking chair. You're moving, but you're not getting anywhere. You're not accomplishing anything. And you're certainly probably not maintaining any kind of um, equanimity. And you're certainly not present. And it's in the presence that we experience the ability to be able to see a bigger picture than just that little thing that happened that irritated us or that we're not able to let go of. And yesterday I spoke about the five places. These were the things that cloud the mind. And the one I want to refer to now is the fourth one, as Mita, the I, me, mine that we're the center of our story, we're the center of our universe. Yeah, that's completely normal. But again, it causes us attachment, pain, suffering, um, inordinate sensitivities to what people do, what they say. And so much of it's mindless. There's a lack of presence, there's a lack of intention, there's a lack of clarity, so that when we can step outside of the I-ness, the me-ness, the mindness, and just become a witness of a bigger picture. So mindfulness is paying attention without any judgment, no likes, Raga, no dislikes, dvesa, these are two other kleshas that cloud the mind and keep us from being joyful, basically. Um, and I, I, I really want that for more people on this planet to have the most extraordinary joy for no particular reason other than you are present and you are mindful in this very moment, not one moment ago and not one moment moving forward. It's right here and it's right now. So we, and before we just get into this mindfulness practice, we can practice mindfulness all day long. So when we're brushing our teeth or brushing our hair, your feet are on the floor. However you're seated right now is an opportunity to practice mindfulness. And please keep this in mind that meditation is a practice. It will never be perfect. It's always a practice. There's no concert hall performance. There's nobody judging your practice except you. So another daily practice of mindfulness because we're all in relationships with people is to listen more and talk less and really look at that person. Really look at your, your kid, your partner, your spouse, even the grocery store clerk. I mean, without staring and make somebody uncomfortable, but people can feel your energy. So, with mindfulness, we simply sit tall and 
you only need between three and five minutes a day. And a mind that has no judgments. That's all you need for mindfulness meditation. A comfortable place to sit and a non judgmental mind. So, when we get the replay for these, we're able to add music. But right now, this is a, a singing bowl. And some of you may have seen them before. And this is how you make them sing. But what I want to do is to use this to start our meditation and to end the meditation. We're going to try for six minutes. Won't be long. Um, I'm going to set this timer. Okay. Closing your eyes, sitting up tall, and just maybe take a couple of deep breaths, like just big in breath. And exhale. And take another deep inhale. And if you feel like you need one more, go for it. Big, deep inhale. <sighs> and then let that which is touching the ground settle down. Or if you're in a chair, make any adjustments. Relax your hands. Separate the biting surfaces of the teeth. Perhaps part your lips just ever so slightly. Now pay attention to the movement of your body as you inhale. And as you exhale, Maybe you hear the sound of a ticking clock, the wind through the windows, whatever it is, just pay attention. You're training yourself to be present. to be mindful. Meditation is never about stopping your thoughts. Meditation is learning to be the witness just pure awareness, zero attachment. It's a freedom. It's giving yourself permission to let everything go. Accepting its presence And then bringing your attention to whatever is in the now.
feeling your feet. Feeling your hands. Noticing the feeling of your clothing on your body. And if it's uncomfortable, just note that for next time. And bring your attention and awareness or witness to anything at all. This is a practice. You're building a muscle. to live in the moment. With no judgment. No preference. Just the isness of this moment. Think of it as a vacation. Unplugging. Each breath in is like a birth. Each breath out is a death. Breathing in a brand new breath in a brand new moment. Every breath out represents an ending. beginning until there's an ending. Mindfulness helps us let go of a thing that happened in the past. We can't be in two places at once. Like the sound of that truck rushing by. It came, now it's gone.
remember when your mind wanders, simply bring it back to your breath. Awareness of the breath becomes an anchor keeping you safe in the present moment creating space within your being infinite possibilities rather than our narrow-minded way of seeing life. Opening the aperture Allowing more light space peace and calm abiding Remember that the ego or the little mind likes action. It likes change. It also loves to criticize. And suggest doing is a waste of time or that you're not good at it. Just be aware. The little mind lives in fear, scarcity, consciousness, feels insecure unless it's in control. Just not sure. But it's not doing anything. Just smile. That's just the lower nature. Your higher nature. knows that this is the place where we can feel joy without being in control. Where we can find space, even if we're cramped up on an airplane, and when 
you lift your inner gaze up to your third eye, that space between your eyebrows in the center of your forehead. There's the space that lacks any boundaries. It's the gateway into eternity. It's the gateway into creativity. Resourcefulness. Resilience. So you can open your eyes if you like and do a little stretching out, maybe a little walk. And if you do walk, imagine that as Thich Nhat Hanh, the Vietnamese Buddhist monk who just left his body on the 22nd of this month at the age of 95, walk as if your feet we're kissing the earth. And then we'll come back and we'll do one more short meditation. As I mentioned in my notes, um, my teacher recommended that we meditate on virtues. And in yoga, in the Vedanta style, we talk about the two pillars of yoga, the law of karma and the law of reincarnation. The eradication of vices and the cultivation of virtues is really the ground, if you will, of these pillars, these two foundations. Karma, karmic yoga is the yogic of action. So for every action, there will be an equal and opposite reaction. In yoga, I'm taught that everything is karma and karma ripens in this lifetime, maybe another lifetime, there's karma ripening in this lifetime that came from another lifetime. And we never really can understand this unless we have access to somebody or that has access to what's called the Akashic records. Um, the Akashic records, everybody has them. they record everything in our lifetime, every thought, every act, every deed, all of it. And in yoga, we, it's stated that the Akashic records and what's in it are presented to us a year after our physical death for great purpose, obviously, to understand. Uh, but that is another topic that um, if you're interested, I suggest you can explore it. Um, 
and in fact, uh, I haven't been to this woman, but I'm told there is somebody uh, in southwestern Ontario who does have access to the Akashic records. Um, some of us probably don't even want to know, <laughs> but um, most people who do this sort of work do it with great responsibility, great love, great care, great compassion, so they don't just blurt out a bunch of things that will completely destroy your <laughs> your sense of um, what your life is. Um, but the meditation practice that my teacher taught on virtues was just to focus on a virtue. So I have spent years focusing on a variety of meditations. He suggests you spend at least a month on one. He'll spend a year on one. Um, virtues like compassion. Virtues like patience, commitment, focus. Um, I think we all know what virtues are. Honesty, truthfulness. So don't spend too much time here thinking about it, but uh, pick one because that's what we'll meditate on. I see that it's a 30 minute mark but um, we'll only again spend five minutes if you can. Just pick any virtue, even if you don't know what it is and, and trust, trust that your inner being knows what you need. People outside of us don't know what we need. They, they think they do and they can be helpful and useful for sure but it has to resonate within us. So pick one and then know that like a record has grooves, whatever we focus on creates the groove and we can change the grooves in the mind. It's called neuroplasticity. Even short meditations done regularly will change the grooves. What happens to the old ones? If we don't travel in those grooves, if those thoughts don't make it into those grooves on a regular basis, they eventually just fill in. It's like a road that doesn't get used. It just kind of, you know, nature takes over. So when we nurture a particular virtue by focusing on it, two things happen you will increase the intensity of that virtue. But there's a flip side where you will notice when that virtue is lacking. So for example, if, if patience was the, the virtue that you wanted to focus on, there will be times when you probably be able to be more patient. There'll be other times when you'll notice Oops, I could have been more patient. And that's a beautiful thing because without awareness, we can't change anything. Awareness is the first step to changing. Okay? So close your eyes, get comfortable in your seated posture. If you're in a chair, your feet should be flat on the floor. And everyone's spine should be long and tall. Okay, eyes are closed. Separate the biting surfaces of the teeth. Allow the lips to part ever so slightly and bring that one word, that one virtue into your mind's eye. You don't have to say it, just see it. Breathing it in, breathing it out. Breathing it in. Feeling it out.
then if you notice your mind wanders, great, awesome, you noticed. And then bring it back to the virtue you're focusing on. Please don't go into any detail about your virtue. The word, the visualization of that word, the silent saying of that word, that's all, nothing more. You are building a groove in your mind that will contain this virtue. This is how we strengthen a virtue or create one. Don't need to think about how it looks, how it will manifest. Have faith and if you practice regularly three to five minutes it will intensify. Thoughts eventually become actions. Repeated actions become habits. Habits define our character. It's like the seed that becomes the mighty oak tree.
Thank you so much for joining me today. See how many times you can practice your mindfulness with whatever your chores are, with whoever you're with today. Try to just be right there in that moment, sharing, noticing, feeling connected to this very moment. Have a beautiful day. If you have any questions or comments, they're always welcome. Namaste.